We had like some really good archive producers, um, and yeah, they were, they were amazing. It was like a free sh a free week shoot in Nigeria, and when we went to Nigeria to shoot, we met someone, and we told them that we were making this story, and they were just like, "Oh, like I'm going to put you in touch with some people," and we basically came across this like treasure trove of like archive tapes that we brought back to London and then when we transferred them there were just like all of these amazing sequences on 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 these tapes so historically they hadn't been archived properly so the sequence with like Clements Westerhoff where he's giving the speech at the gala and he's talking about you know that Nigeria gonna get to the, the World Cup and win the African Cup of Nations like that was on these tapes uh, when the Super Eagles arrive um, in Dallas, I think for the for the World Cup, that was on the tape. So there were like these amazing sequences that were just on these tapes, and and yeah, a lot of the the archive came from the Olympics and and FIFA as well. So, yeah. so that game. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. And that's a good question because, like I said, I grew up watching this team, and I've never seen any of, those, any of that footage before. It's like I remember watching the 96 Olympics and remember the 94 World Cup. So to see all that, it's like, oh, this actually happened. So it's amazing. Kind of buttress on your point um, about the documentary. I remember listening to a Mundial podcast about the team. What I found out is like all those players basically had to like put their money together to come to America 96 Olympics, which is insane to think about. Like they won it on their own budget. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Like the NFF is still the same way they are then, and yeah, it's still now. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, pretty I mean, scaving at the NFF. So. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, my dad does not like them at yeah. all. I like some of the stuff he says. I can't say it here because um, yeah. I don't want to translate it in Yoruba. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not too happy about the NFF. Like he doesn't watch Nigeria football anymore because yeah, of them. Yeah. So, yeah. You have? Yeah. Go ahead. Um. It's a good question. So Julia, who's one of the producers who sat here, she called me, I think, uh, in in lockdown in 2020, and she was just like, "What do you know about the Super Eagles?" And I was just like, she, you know, she almost asked me like sheepishly, and I was like, "What do you mean? I know everything about the Super Eagles." <laughs> and then yeah, she said that you know she'd been in touch with MRC, who funded the film, and there'd been this brief about this story, and. Yeah, as, as soon as she said it, I was like, this is like a no-brainer. I was like 13 when Nigeria won Olympic gold. And I was just like, why didn't I think of that before? Like, you know, like, why hasn't this story been told? So as soon as Julia and, and Amit kind of like, you know, we started talking about it, I just knew exactly how we could tell the story. But I was just, I was just so surprised that it hadn't been told before because it has everything, you know. It's, a, it's, a, it's an underdog story. It's a story about, you know, uh, what was going on in Nigeria at that time. Like, you can't tell that without, you know, you can't tell the football story without exploring what was going on, the backdrop of, of Nigeria at that time. So I just thought, yeah, like, you know, I think if we get this right, I think we'll definitely have a half-decent film. So that's where it came from. I, I'm a British-born Nigerian. So, yeah, it, it just all fell, you know, it all kind of fell in the right place. So, so basically, when we were doing, uh, when we were looking for all the archive, kind of just realised that we didn't have a lot of archive of fans reacting to the games, um, and we just wanted some way to sort of like show that. And then also, like when we did pre-interviews with some of the players, they spoke about, you know, just how they started playing football. Um, so, and also we didn't have that in archive. So I just thought you know, we, we should definitely communicate that because they're really, you know, important points. The fact that these guys, you know, were playing like barefoot on the streets of Lagos to basically becoming Olympic gold medalists. Like, we need to chart that story. So that's why we shot, you know, the, the recreation at the beginning and towards the end, it was just to show the fans reacting to sort of like the games because we didn't have that in archive and everybody that we spoke to spoke so sort of like passionately and vividly about you know what that was like and what it was like in Lagos and what it was like across Nigeria when those games were on and Nigeria was winning so yeah that's why we did the recreation no it hasn't it hasn't been shown yet in Nigeria but like hopefully in the new year yeah you know I think it's 
in many ways, it's like a specialist subject, you know, like not, I think lots of people that know about football remember that Nigeria had a good team in the 90s, but they don't necessarily remember how good that team really? was or what they achieved. So I think when we were like editing the film, like uh, we worked with an amazing editor called Nick Zimmerman, and I think we really placed a huge emphasis on, you know, those games feeling like you're watching them for the first time. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and feeling like, yeah, we just wanted to heighten that sense of this is compelling and like, you know, people need to feel like, you know, will they or won't they kind of like get through here? Even though you could just go on the internet and just Google like Nigeria gold medalists, but you, you know, we, we didn't want to presume that anybody knew anything. So I think we put a lot of kind of like emphasis on you know, r r bringing that out in the way that we cut the games and, and, and the football sequences. So, yeah. No, no, I th like, we did the interviews over, I don't know, it was over like a, a, a number of like months, I think. So we had some people, like for instance, like JJ Kocha was one of the last people that we got. So by that time we'd interviewed everyone. So we knew the holes that JJ would have to fill because we didn't get it from other people. So. Yeah, like some people, like some of the, the pundits or the commentators, those interviews were really long because those guys could speak about everything. But the players, we needed them to be specific. Like Taribo was really good about how he remembers the game and what the coaches said to him. So it's just about, you know, just looking at how we were telling the story and just looking at what we needed people to talk about specifically. Whereas, you know, we, we knew that the players wouldn't necessarily do the political history as well as some of the other guys, you know. So we just wanted those guys to, you know, chime in on the political history, but just tell us about the games, tell us how you felt, tell us what the tactics were and all of those things. That was really important. So it was kind of like a puzzle just filling in the holes. And, you know, I think that we were allowed to do that because we shot over a period of time. If we just had to do all of the interviews in like two days, then it would be problematic because we would have lots of holes, you know, so. Yeah, I, I don't, I wasn't really surprised by anything, but I think the interview that just can, chimes with me, chimed with me the most is, is, is Noor Sarawiwa, Ken Sarawiwa's daughter, because like that was, the, that was the one that I was most nervous about because obviously I knew her story, I knew what happened to her father, but you know, we were asking her to you know speak on that and and share that was it was quite a traumatic time for her and her family. So I guess I, I, yeah, I was surprised by her poise and I was I was surprised by how you know just um, emotive she was and how calm and just how articulate and eloquent she was. You know, if that had happened to me, I don't know if I would be able to sit in front of a camera and sort of like relay that. You know, so. Um, yeah, so it's probably normal. Okay. She said something that was very interesting about how, <clears throat> like, she only watched, you know, when we watched, when we won in 96, yeah. that made her proud to be Nigerian. It's yeah. funny because it's like, a lot of times we kind of divide ourselves, like, oh, I'm your about this, I'm that. And yeah, then when yeah. the national team plays, it's like, oh, we're all one. Exactly. So that's like the only time. So yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny she said that because yeah. it's something that you hear growing up. Exactly. I'm sure you've heard it a million times. 100%. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah, well, when we spoke to the players, like, no, it was like the opposite. It was almost like, we oh, sorry. Yeah, you can. He basically was just asking is like, within the national team, is any like divide, like, I guess, between ethnic, between tribes in the, in the country? Because in Nigeria, we have like multiple tribes. We have the big three, but we also have other ones within the country. So it was like asking, was that within the country, was that like shown in the national team? So. Yeah, yeah. So like, when we spoke to the players, they would, you know, it was complete opposite. They were just, you know, like you said, when we come together, you, we're, we're here to represent Nigeria regardless of tribe. So that didn't really kind of manifest itself within within the team. You know, when those guys came together, they were all, all brothers. I'm sure there's still stuff that happens to this day on the national team that we, yeah, it's like know. stuff that like, yeah. we can't say all that, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, we d we we did actually try and reach out to to one of the original NFF members that was around, you know, during that team's like kind of reign, I guess. But yeah, I, I these films are quite hard to make in terms of like getting. Not everybody you ask is always going to be in your documentary, I guess. So we reached out and 
we didn't really hear hear back. But and also I don't. The NFF is, it's it's not, you know, it's not a big thing within, the, the realms of the film. Do you know what I mean? Obviously they were the the, the governing body, but. For me, the film was always about these players and, and what was happening in Nigeria and just, you know, those guys overcoming all of these incredible obstacles that they were up against. Um, I guess you could argue that the NFA, you know, was part of that. But, yeah, we reached out and we unfortunately didn't get a reply. So just one question in the back. I quickly can go over here. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you get I still want you to, like, yell. Yeah, go. Okay. It's it. Question and a comment. Uh, thank you, Yemi, for making the movie. I've been part of the production. I, uh, I just wanted to ask why maybe Kano Wanko was not featured, number one. Uh, my comment is, actually, I was at three of those games, 96 Olympics. Um, I lost my voice <laughs> against Nigeria, Brazil. I was part of the supporters club, those people drumming. Yeah. We're down 3-1, yeah. and I said, I, I give up. <laughs> and then when we came back, we were out there 45 minutes after the match celebrating. <laughs> and uh, it was a great experience. I still have the game tickets right here. Amazing. Uh, so I have the pictures. Um, there are a lot of people. I was actually also there in 94 World Cup, Nigeria, Italy, when we lost. <laughs> I still have pictures. <laughs> And I've, I've been at the bottom and I've been at the high. You've experienced so, a lot of heartbreak. I've, uh, yeah, the emotional roller coaster. <laughs> and I thank you for the movie. Oh, thank you. Um, trust me, it was a great experience to have been there. Thank cool. you. Um, so, yeah, the first question about Kanu is yeah, we tried really hard, but he's Kanu. He's like an international, like, you know, legendary football player. And we just couldn't make it. <clears throat> We couldn't make it work with his timings. You know, he's a busy guy. Um, we tried to get him in Lagos and it, it, we just kind of struggled. And then we tried to get him in the UK and he, we kind of struggled to make that work as well. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but I kind of feel his presence is felt. You know, I think, you know, you see his contribution in the film, you see how important his contribution was, in, particularly in that, um, in that Brazil game. So. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily feel that the film misses him in that sense, you know. Um, but yeah, we did try. That was the last question. Um, thank you, everybody. And cool. Yemi, thank you so much. For yeah, thanks it. for coming to see the film. Thank you.